focusing squarely on the systems that support public health. And we know that these systems have sustained neglect and lack of investment for decades. And yet, in the last 15 months, our nation woke up to public health's role as they learned that their lives actually depend on public health. We have this platform that we've never had. As we think forward, what are we gonna do with it? How do we use uh, the platform, the spotlight that, that COVID has given public health uh, to, to continue to affect change in different ways? We were not well positioned for a public health crisis, uh, the the um, size and severity of COVID-19. Job number one is to know the health status of the community that you're protecting, that you've been charged to take care of. And if you can't actually determine with real data in a timely way what that status is, then how can we do our jobs? It's hard for many of us to think about anything outside of COVID, but clearly it has identified areas where we really need to be thinking about uh, strengthening and growing and building for the future. One is really about the workforce. Uh, at every step of this, from case investigations and contact tracing, to getting good information out into communities, to testing, and now most recently with vaccination, uh, that has always gone better when health departments have a workforce who represents the community that they serve. We have really prioritized hiring experts who live in public housing or who have come out of public housing or live in highly concentrated Latino communities um, and making sure that that's a, a priority for us. I actually think the way we depoliticize is that we become more sophisticated and recognize that public health is political. We need to have those decisions be incubated and have cross disciplines come in to make sure that our evidence base is able to actually work and function and be impactful in a political environment. I actually think that the public health workforce needs to be better trained in policymaker engagement and understand the dynamics of what they're going to get thrown into and how to respond and survive and thrive in political environments and stay true to an evidence-based decision-making process. If anyone doesn't think that politics doesn't play in public health, I ask them to go back and actually look at the history of Jon Snow taking the pump handle off the Broad Street pump. He didn't just get up in the middle of the night with a wrench and take that pump handle off. He had to convince people that there was something in the water that was a new scientific activity that was not widely believed. We don't have to reimagine. We, we actually know what needs to be done. I really believe that we need to really reboot the public health services research um, enterprise. It's really fallen on hard times. It's not well funded. We've really let it go into disrepair. And if it's one of the things that COVID has clearly shown, as Dr. Sanchez pointed out, is the need that we need to have more information about the public health system, how to implement parts of that public health system, and how to do that in a science-driven, evidence-based way. What we have to do is start creating the political will and the demand for really changing the culture of how we are investing, how we are running, and how we actually manage our public health systems. We have got to do it better. Otherwise, we are going to continue to be the sickest wealthy nation in the world. There are enormous steps that we could be taking today to make huge progress and shift us from the bottom of the barrel of wealthy nations and health status to the top. And I actually think it's public health time right now. We can make a big difference in changing this dynamic.